have a word from the Lord today. Did I say we're going to leave different from the way that we came in? It's because it's true. Uh, okay, uh, so today's message is inspired by what we saw last week. Uh, we are primarily a spirit being. When we get born again, all right, the day you lift your hand and said yes to Jesus, you were a child of God, you were born of spirit, just like John says, and you are new creation according to Corinthians, right? Everything has been made new, all things are passed away. But when you look at the mirror, you're the same person that you were before, you know? So where is this new experience? It happened in your spirit. It's an unseen reality. But it is true. You are a new creation. You are a child of God. You've been born again. Not of flesh and blood, but of spirit. Alright? So what I think we need to realize as believers is when we get born again of spirit, that spirit part of us becomes the most important part of us. Uh, um, the business that we are involved in as children of God is spirit business. Uh, spirit agenda. We are driven by spirit movement. It is God's kingdom agenda, God's spirit agenda, and everything else follows. Amen? Yeah? So, so spirit becomes very important for, for us. It's everything. We are alive to the spirit realm. Uh, and the spirit realm is very different from this realm. Hmm? In fact, the spirit realm is more real than this realm. Because the Bible says in Hebrews that by faith we believe that what is seen did not come from that which is visible. It came from the unseen. So the source is the unseen, which means it is more real than the seen. Which is kind of hard to put your mind around because all we know is this world. All right? But God is himself spirit and he is creator. Everything comes from them. So, so spirit is huge. And, and I think sometimes we make a mistake as people of God by being spirit beings but locked firmly into this earthly realm. Into the things of the natural. So today I want to give some instruction and maybe the Lord will help us just to resensitize us to the reality that is here among us. That's just beyond the realm of what we can see. It is right here but it's just not right here. Just you can touch it but not really. Hallelujah. Because God has some business to do over there. Go with me please to 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 15. We're going to read two passages of scripture. 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 15 and Matthew chapter 16 uh, and verse number 13. Uh, verse 15, 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 15. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning. An army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, Oh Lord, open his eyes so he may see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots and fire all around Elijah. Lord, open the eyes. Now go with me to Matthew chapter 16. It's a familiar scripture. Verse 13 to 18. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist Others say Elijah, Elijah other, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, or the other translation says flesh and blood, but my father in heaven... And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Praise the Lord. Now, I highlighted these two passages because these two passages speak from different angles about the same thing. They speak about the reality of the seen and the reality of the unseen. All right? And it deals, both of them deal with the realities these realities and we see how they play out in each of these stories okay 
the servant of Elisha was distraught and he was fearful because he saw an army surrounding the city that was sent to take Elisha captive and he became very afraid but Elisha was not afraid because he saw not only the army he also saw the army surrounding the army the army surrounding the army was not visible to the naked eye it was a spiritual reality but Elisha's eyes were open to those invisible armies and so because he saw the invisible army he was not afraid and he told he was able to encourage the servant he said don't be afraid those who are with us are more than those who are with them and then he said Lord please open these eyes notice that Elisha did not pray he did not say those who are with us are more than those who are with them father destroy this army those who are with us are more than those who are with them father God take care of these enemies take them out he didn't say that he prayed Lord open these eyes do you know why he prayed that I think I'm run to something now he prayed for the eyes and not for the army because real deliverance is not a matter of the army being removed real deliverance is about the eyes being opened real deliverance Real breakthrough is not about getting out of the situation you're in. Real breakthrough is having your eyes open, whether the situation is there or not. Real healing is not a matter of when God does a breakthrough and brings you out of the great conundrum that you find yourself in. Great healing is when your eyes are open to see that there is another army, to see that those who are with us are more than those that are with them. The great healing is when our eyes are open to see spiritually according to what God has revealed. That's, the, that's where the blessing is. That's where the breakthrough is. That's where the true life is. In, our, in country church, they said amen. amen. Uh, you know, the truth is we could come out of everything and have every, every situation, every problem, every healing, and our eyes still be closed and it's not complete. We could be completely delivered, have all of our bank situations sorted out. Our boss likes us. You know, the dog is even happy to have us home. And our eyes are still closed. But you could be in the worst of situations, surrounded by an enemy, in the middle of a pit, not knowing where to go and what to do. And the Lord, pop open your eyes. And that's the real blessing. That's the real blessing. Amen, amen. May the Lord open our eyes today. May the Lord open somebody's eyes today to see that those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Praise the Lord. The army was still there after the eyes were open. Because the, I mean, he took care of them later. He blinded their eyes, which is another message. But the, the break, breakthrough was with the eyes open. May the Lord open our eyes. May the Lord open every eye to see what God would have us to see. Jesus introduces, when he talks about the church in Matthew 16, he introdu introduces us to something that we overlook many times. When it comes to the things of church, notice that he said, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but my Father in heaven. Then he says, And I tell you, are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church. The Catholics, we love the Catholics. Actually, there's going to come a time where I'll be invited to preach in Catholic Church. And a time when I'll be invited to speak in Orthodox Church. Uh, what Jesus, you know, the Catholics, they actually, they physically built the, the great basilica in Rome on the bones of St. Peter in honor of this verse. All right. On this rock, I will build my church. And, uh, you know, let's give them great recognition for doing that. Praise God. But I, I, I really don't think that that's what Jesus was alluding to when he was talking about building the church. Because he said, man did not reveal this to you. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. But my Father in heaven. And then he says, and now I'm going to build my church. So the church is built on the stuff that the Father has revealed. Meaning that the church is built not on things of the natural, but the things of the spiritual. The church is built not on things of the seen, 
but the things of the unseen. This project starts with unseen. This ministry starts with unseen. Your life in God begins with unseen. And I thought this is a bit of a problem because so much of our church experience is tied exclusively to everything that we see. Because we have to come to a physical building and sit in a physical chair and hear with our ears and sense and everything. But beyond what's going on even here, there is another. Our, our power as a congregation, it's not limited to this room. It goes far beyond. Because we're all spirit beings coming together to do spiritual business with our spiritual God. To open our eyes to see what's going on and get message and information and downloads and interaction with the things of the unseen. Hallelujah. So, so, so that's where the real power is, is, is felt. I was, uh, uh, I was studying before in my, in my, in my uh, in, uh, se seminary. Um, and I remember there was a, a fuller, fuller theological seminary put out a, a study that they did a, a research on a survey of uh, pastors. And I think they, they surveyed about 3,000 pastors all across. This is an American study. And they, they surveyed. And they came back with statistics that were a bit disturbing because they found that among the 3,000 pastors that they surveyed, 80% uh, of them were not enjoying the ministry. They were experiencing unusually high stress levels. And most of them wished they were doing something else. And I'm there in class taking this down. And I said, you know what? In Jesus' name. I mean, this, this school is preparing me for ministry. In Jesus' name. The devil is alive. And I wrote down, I'm going to enjoy ministry. I'm going to have a good time. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a blessing. But you know, when you get in ministry and you get in life and you get in situations, the, the truth is that you can kind of relate to some of those pastors sometimes. Because uh, ministry is unlike any other thing. There's like a, a different level to this, this, this thing. You know, it only takes one. I mean, everyone could be saying, Hallelujah and bless you, Pastor Z. We love you. Pa and there'll be one way over there in the corner who just has a scowl on his face while you're preaching. Takes you out of the spirit. Everybody's getting blessed. And then you start asking yourself, What did I do? What did I say? Is my zipper really up? It's, you know, you go through all of this drama in your head, you know. It plays with your mind so much because everyone has their own needs and everyone has their own issue. And, and I can understand, and to be honest, I can relate now a bit more to those pas pastors. I can understand why the stress of ministry can take you out. Uh, but then, you know, I, I began to also realize for them and for me that whatever... Uh, comes by way of stress, worry, fear. It is a 99.9999999 plus one percent that that concern came from the scene. And deliverance does not come by fixing what you see in the scene. Deliverance comes by seeing the unseen. Uh, some of you know, like the last year, I've really tried to step up my prayer game. I tell everybody, you won't find me in my office anymore. You'll find me in prayer. Prayer is my new office now. Uh, and uh, I think it's been like out of COVID, the Lord showed me. I, I think I shared with you before. But the, the amazing thing is that I found that prayer becomes so important because you engage with this natural world with your eyes and with your ears. But you engage the unseen world with the word and with the spirit. So, so it's two different apparatuses that you use to engage. And you cannot use your eyes and ears to engage with the things of the unseen. It won't, it won't work. The best you can do with eyes and ears is repeat what man has, has done. And the traditions of men. All right? But Jesus says, I'm not building with traditions of men. The church is built on what the Father reveals. It starts with unseen. So I've found that when it becomes so important to pray because the pull of the scene is so strong. Issues are so strong. Drama is so strong. People are so strong. And you feel yourself sinking. And you're gasping for air. You need to be in the spirit. Because the Lord shows you stuff in the spirit. That delivers you from the weight. And the pressure of the scene. Elisha and Eli Elisha's servant were in the same place. But were tuning into different channels. And, and real deliverance comes when we shift the channels. 
And when we open our eyes to what God is seeing, because when we see what God is seeing, we see that though there is an army, there is another army surrounding the army. And those who are with us are more than those with them that, that are with them. Uh, uh, amen. So may the Lord open our eyes today. Hallelujah. May, may the, the unseen be more real to us than the seen. May the unseen be food for us. May the unseen be life for us. May the unseen change us. May we build on the unseen. May the church be built on the unseen. May our lives be built in the unseen. The, 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 the spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words that I have given you, Jesus said, they are spirit and they are life. May we all have a big gursha today from the unseen. May the, may the power of the scene and the, 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 the place that it's locked us in. Some of us are so locked in the scene. And on the evidence of what we've seen and heard and it's taking us out. The problem is taking us out. We are sinking. May the power of the unseen swallow up everything that we see in the scene. In Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. So today is not a good preaching Sunday. Jesus, what he was doing actually in Matthew 16 when he lays out the, the, the principles of the church. What Jesus is doing is he is laying out a blueprint of how church is supposed to be. And what the blueprint is, is 100% unseen. So today is not good preaching Sunday. Good job, Pastor Z. God bless you. But today is blueprint rearrangement Sunday. Today we build on the unseen. There is another angle from the unseen. There is blessing in the unseen. There is an army surrounding the army in the unseen. Your problems will never be fully solved unless they are solved from the unseen. And not by addressing the problem, but addressing the eyes. May the Lord open our eyes today. Amen. Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. Man did not reveal this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. Lord, open my, our eyes. Lord, open my eyes. There's a whole nother angle of information. That you are missing. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18. says, So we fix our eyes. Not on what is seen. But on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary. But what is unseen is eternal. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. When, when Jesus came to the, to the earth. He came with his eyes wide open to the spirit realm. He said, I only do and say what my father does. Uh, and it, he ruffled some feathers a little bit, you could say, uh, to the point that he troubled the establishment that they crucified him on, on the cross, which was part of God's design, of course. But when he rose from the dead, uh, he told the disciples, don't go anywhere until you are endued with power from on high. They asked him, when, is, when are you going to restore the, the, the kingdom to, 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 to the Jews? And he said, it's not for me to know the date or the time. But he says, as for you, you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be my witnesses. Witness is someone who sees something. Uh, he said, don't go anywhere until you get your eyes corrected. I go every year to see a doctor to get my eyes adjusted because seeing is so important. I need these to see everything in the natural because the natural sight becomes very important. If I can't see properly, I can't function properly. Today, Holy Spirit is going to give everybody an eye exam. Some of you need some serious eye adjustment. Some of you have been living spiritual lives 100% in the natural. Spiritual life begins when our eyes are lifted from this natural world and we start seeing in the spirit, seeing what God has for us. And there is deliverance from the spirit. There is help from the spirit. There is eyes open to not necessarily change circumstances, but to see God's angle on the circumstances. Can you believe it? Peter, uh, Paul and Silas were beaten and thrown in prison after obeying the Lord. And from the inner cell with their hands and feet chained, they begin to sing songs of praise. Why do you sing songs of praise when you're in the middle of such drama? It's because they see beyond the condition that they're in. If you're seeing 
properly. Your condition is irrelevant. It's of a non, non-issue, non-factor. God is bigger. God is greater. Hallelujah. You know what I'm going to pray even now? For our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. Their eyes would open in Ukraine. I don't know if you're following the, the news. All right? And I don't know all the details. I don't know if I can ever trust the media again. But eh, may, the Lord, may the Lord surround whatever army is surrounding the army. May eyes be open there to see that the God who helped us is the same God who helped them. And that God would do something that is beyond the natural. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So may God open your eyes. Uh, When you are a Christian living in the unseen, you're a very complicated person. You're overloaded with opinion. Hmm? You are either a Democrat or a Republican. Eh? It's American. Here, you're either from this side or that side. I'll leave it alone because we're just a little bit. You can preach very boldly about Democrats and Republicans in this part of the world. Hallelujah. But uh, change the language. We take sides. We take positions. We develop theories. We develop arguments and points. of, And, and we get so caught up in, in our position. And we hold on to par- our position. When the Lord opens our eyes, we get delivered, first of all, from ourselves. And we realize that our, posi- our opinion was not really that much value anyway. And we found out that God does not need our opinion to deliver us or to bring a breakthrough or to, or to bring, de- de- bring deliverance. Uh, the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, he said, what are you, almighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, those of you who don't know my name, let me introduce you to myself <laughs> this morning. <laughs> Z is not short for Zedekiah, Zachariah, Zebulun. No, 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 no. Come over here, somebody. Z is short for Zerubbabel. Bamarenya libelachu. Zerubabe. In Hebrew, come on, let me bring the Hebrew now. There is no B in the Hebrew. Zerubavel. Zerubavel. Hallelujah. And the word of the Lord came to Zerubbabel. What are you, almighty mountain? You will become a level ground. And he said, it's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by the spirit of the Lord. Don't limit your experience in God to what your eyes have seen and your ears have heard. That's the spirit that crucified Jesus. Everybody crucified Jesus. In fact, I was reading the other day. When they brought Jesus to, to the Sanhedrin for his final trial before his crucifixion. The Bible, they, one, of the, one translation says, they brought him before Annas, Caiaphas, and the teachers of the law. Other translation, experts in the law. Please don't limit your experience in God to what your eyes have seen. <laughs> And your ears have heard. You are missing the whole point. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. There is a reality beyond this reality. There is a life beyond this life. There is an army beyond this army. There is help beyond this financial situation. There is breakthrough beyond this family issue. There is deliverance beyond this situation in your job. You don't need to come out of it. You just need your eyes to be open. Because when you see by the Spirit, you are really free. You are really free. It's so amazing. I remember the first preaching we ever had, official preaching at Beza Church. Saleh was preaching. Who says hi, by the way? I talked with him this morning. He says, say hi. But he was talking about, you know, there was another Reb Shayan. It was the, the, the Zatanas about 2005 riots and all of that. And uh, he preached a message, we're still here. Some of you, I don't know, way, not, none of you were there. It was very few of us. It's my favorite preaching, I think, to this day. We're still here. It was the story when, when Peter and, and Paul and Silas were in prison. And the Bible says, God sent the earthquake. The, the foundations of the prison shook. And everybody's chains came off. And the, 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 the keeper of the prison was about to kill himself because he said, surely the prisoners have escaped. But Paul from the prison says, don't go anywhere and don't harm yourself. We are still right here. I say, why are you still right here? 
You are free. God provided this deliverance. Your chains are off. Now it's time to run for the exit. But real deliverance is not about coming out. I used to teach youth ministry. Pastor Z, I would be just fine if I could just leave my parents' house. No. Your answer is not leaving your parents' house. Your answer is not changing jobs. Your answer is not changing house. Your answer is not changing countries. If your eyes are not opened here, there's no breakthrough. If your eyes are, are not open now, going anywhere in the world won't make any difference. If you can't get breakthrough here, breakthrough does not, in the spirit here, you won't get breakthrough over there, no matter how far there is. Deliverance is not coming out. Deliverance is Jesus coming in. May Jesus come in today. I don't know what you're dealing with today. I don't know what the situation is. There's pressure on all of us in the scene. I thank God that he'd give me this wisdom to start praying more recently. I pray more than I normally do. I'm even the, the chief officer of Imma's Women's Prayer. I'm the only man that goes to Imma's Women's Prayer. Uh, I've just shut Thursdays and Fridays. You won't find me. Uh, uh, but in prayer but the reason is, is you, you start getting into this stuff it gets a bit addictive and he's different every time you know like like if he really visits you like this and you will be waiting for him like this come on Jesus then he comes from that side but my point is uh, uh, when you give time to the things of the spirit you really the burden gets light the freedom is a real freedom it's not a fake freedom. Like when you're, when you're a Christian and a believer, a spiritual person living in the flesh, you know the verses, but the, you don't have the life of the verses, you know? Like you know everything, like the joy of the Lord is my strength, but you have no joy. You have stress, but you know the verse. So now it's disattached from your life and you're just knowing it like a, a good poetry. <laughs> you know, that's a great poetry. But when you come into the spirit, you don't know the verse, the joy of the Lord is my strength. You know the reality, but the joy. You see what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Hey, this is just a reminder. Have you subscribed to our Telegram channel? Not only will you find important announcements, but also access to our daily devotionals, family devotionals, and much, much more. We also want to take this moment to thank you for your generosity and faithfulness throughout the years. Not only is your giving a fragrant and acceptable offering before God, but Paul in 2 Corinthians 9.12 describes it as an expression of ministry. And it is that very ministry that allows us to continue to put our hands to the plow together in the work of reaching people with the message of God's grace and love. You can give through four different avenues. You can stop by your nearest commercial bank or Braham Bank and deposit your offering into the account number on the screen, you can also take advantage of either bank's mobile banking apps. For those of you who have international major credit cards or debit cards, you can give online on our website, bezachurch.org. And you can always stop by our accounting office on the PK Building 5th floor, and they will be happy to serve you there. In this extraordinary and unusual season, we appreciate you going out of your way to give. Thank you. God bless you. በመጨረሻም አንድ ነገር ላስተዋውሳችሁ የቤዛ ቴሌግራም ቻናልን ጆይን ያደርጉ። በቴሌግራም የቤተክርስቲያን ማስተዋቂያ ብቻ ሳይሆን የለታዊ የእግዚአብሔር ቃል ጥናት፣ የቤተሰብ ጥናት እና ሌሎች አጫጭር ነገሮችን ያገኛሉ። በዚህ መንፈሳዊነቱን በመመገብ ይትኩ። በመጨረሻ ለእግዚአብሔር በታማኝነት እንደቃሉ አስራትና መባቹን የፍቅር ስጦታችሁን ስለምትሰጡ እግዚአብሔር ይባርካችሁ። ለእግዚአብሔር የምትሰጡት ስጦታችሁ በእግዚአብሔር ዘንድ እንደ መልካም ማዕዛ እንደሆነ ቃሉ ያስተምረናል ይብቻ ሳይሆን ሁለተኛ ቆሮንጦስ ምዕራፍ 9 ቁጥር 12 ላይ እንደሚያስተምረን ለእግዚአብሔር የምናቀርበው አገልግሎታችንም ጭምር ነው ይሄው አገልግሎታችሁ በእግዚአብሔር ያገልግሉት እርሻ ላይ አብልጠን እንድንዘረጋ ሰዎችንም በእግዚአብሔር የጸጋ ቃል እንድንدرس የሚያደርገን አብረን የምንጠመድበት ያገልግሉት እድል ነው ስትሰጡ ባራት መንገድ መስጠት ይችላልላችሁ አንደኛ በቅርባችሁ ወደሚገኝ የኢትዮጵያ ንግድ ባንክ ወይም ብርሃን ባንክ በመሄድ ሁለተኛ በተለይም በዚህ እንግዳ ጊዜ በስልካችሁ በሚገኝ ሞባይል ባንኪንግ አፕ እንድትጠቀሙ አብልጠንን መከራለን ከኢትዮጵያ ውጪ ይላላችሁ ወገኖቻችን ደግሞ በሜጀር ክሬዲት ካርድ ወይም ዴቢት ካርድ በመጠቀም 
bezachesh.org ድረገጽ ላይ በመሄድ መስጠት ይችላልላችሁ በመጨረሻም በቲኬ ኢንተርናሽናል ህንፃ አምስተኛ ፎቅ ላይ በሚገኘው የቤዛ ሂሳብ ክፍል በመሄድ ለተሰጡት ይችላልላችሁ በዚህ ባልተለመደ እንግዳ በሚመስል ጊዜ ሁሉን አልፋችሁ ለእግዚአብሔር ሥራ ከሌላው ጊዜ አብልጣችሁ ስለተዘረጋችሁ እግዚአብሔር ይባርካችሁ እንወዳችኋለን እግዚአብሔር ይጠብቃችሁ ፍቱንም ያብራላችሁ